Hello and welcome to your July 3rd full moon reading. Now, this is the first of four supermoons in 2023 and they all happen in a row. So we have the July one, um, and then we have um, two in August and one in September. So um, supermoons by default are quite interesting because it just means that the moon is really close to Earth. Therefore, it appears bigger in the night sky. And the closer the moon to Earth, the more your emotional core will be triggered, can be looked at, can also uh, be more used for um, reflecting things. Um, so there's loads of really, really positive things about supermoons as such. Now, the one in July, which is the one we're talking about at the moment, is in the sign of Capricorn. And so we're looking at the energy that Capricorn brings and the energy that the moon brings to you and myself <laughs> as beings. So Capricorn is the sign <clears throat> that has been <laughs> mislabeled from the get-go. So obviously you look at the sign of Capricorn, it is uh, depicted by a um, mountain goat when in reality when the um, constellation came about or the naming of the constellation came about it was actually named after a um, of their race of sea goats nowhere near mountain goats <laughs> so therefore the energy that that capricorn carries is not the energy it is supposed to carry and then when you leave um, this explanation and move towards um, the vedic astrology in vedic astrology capricorn is even seen as a completely different animal which is the alligator so oh, let's get through this <laughs> What that means is that Capricorn as a sign is associated with three very different beings. And when the moon, which is the super moon, like I said, is that close, you can also then understand that Capricorn can feel quite torn between what to do next, where to go from here. Um, so, so that inner voice, that intuition, while it is uh, quite intact, is quite difficult for Capricorns to figure out if that makes sense because the tendency is to, un to, to not fully understand who you are as a Capricorn if that makes sense um, and, and sometimes because you're obviously associated with three very different beings um, it is hard for a lot of Capricorns to figure out and this is just um, the way I want to phrase it is what they are supposed to do. Now, reality is you do you. You decide what you want to do. It is just much harder when your, your inner guidance system follows <coughs> sometimes somewhat conflicting messages. And this is why this is important because obviously the full moon, which is now closer, hence the super moon, um, you have to understand that when the super moon is about your emotions and and because the supermoon is so powerful, it is really important to understand that because the moon is about you reflecting on how you truly feel, um, to find a bit more of a sense of where you're going with things. And this is really important for the July one, because the July one is happening on... Um, July the 3rd and nothing happens in isolation so when the full moon is happening you can feel the energy a couple of days before and certainly a couple of days after right so we're sort of in the energy of the full moon for quite some time and why this is important is because of this so full moon super moon July is happening on July 3rd and on July the 6th the sun which is sort of the opposite of the moon energetically, um, is actually in what is known as an aphelion, which means it is super far away from the uh, from Earth. So 
So the sun is away from Earth. The moon is close to Earth. Since the moon and the sun do not share space well, they're over when, when they have overlapping energy, they can they can create um, doubt in people whether or not whether or not to follow your heart or your head. Point I'm making is when. The full moon hits you on July 3rd and you feel like I'm gonna know where I'm going here. Understand that on July 6th, which is sort of the, the outgoing energy or the ebbing uh, energy of uh, the full moon, you get an extra strength brought your way that will then allow you to figure stuff out much better. So the point is, if you are one of those moonstruck people and the supermoon will affect you, therefore. Bite your time, don't make massive decisions on the third. Sit with it and look at how to change things and where you really are around the 6th of July. Because when you have, you know, uh, combinations like this, that the, that the, um, the moon is super close and then um, the sun and the sun and the moon affect us massively, is super far away from the planet we all dwell on, that in this case is really, really a helpful thing um, because then you're not affected by your ego. So when you feel um, a bit more centered, which is actually what, what is important, um, and again, it's not the easiest thing for the sign of Capricorn to be super centered. Um, and it comes in Capricorn terms, it comes with self-doubt. So Therefore, the energy of the full moon and the super moon in July um, 2023 is also bringing up doubt. And, and in Capricorn, being associated with three different, very different beings, um, you may not be super prepared to make um, informed decisions. Hence, wait until the 6th. Really, really important to wait until the 6th. So there's not all that much happening um, with regards to the full moon energy, apart from the fact it's because it is a super moon. It allows you to see and feel much deeper than you normally would. And remember, we have four full moons uh, in a row, if that makes sense. One of them will be a blue moon. The blue moon is the second moon in the month, which will happen uh, uh, um, on the 28th of August. So there's two full moons in August. I will talk about this um, in a subsequent um, full moon readings. But for now, just understand that when it comes to feeling the most affected emotionally, it will be this month and then August and September, which means so the four uh, full moons that are happening in a row will all be um, emotionally super draining, but also super freeing. Because the whole point is that when you understand that we are emotional beings, and why, and why wouldn't we, um, is to understand that you can then use this to your advantage because the, the full moon obviously has a lot of, of power. Now, here's another important thing. The full moon, right? Is associated with the ostrich. Now, when you look at the ostrich as a um, as an animal guide, um, it is the land bird or the, that that lie, lay, lays the the biggest eggs, if that makes sense. Um, and it only has um, claws, if that makes sense. Um, so while while most birds have four. Um, or three, depending on the bird. Now, the, the ostrich is bipedal. So when it comes to standing in your power, being grounded, if that makes sense, the, logically speaking, the ostrich, by association, should have problems with just two, um, whatever they call, talons, whatever. I can't remember what they're called. And yet, it is the fastest bird, land bird, non-flying bird, that we are. So the point is, when you know or feel, I'm, I feel I'm not whole at the moment, I'm not well, 
I feel a little less, but the, 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 the full moon is associated with the ostrich. Even when you feel you're not complete, you're not super well, the ostrich shows you it's not a problem. You still function well. And another thing that's important with the association of the full moon and the ostrich um, is that the ostrich is known to have what is known as a special vision. So, um, therefore, from an, from an association point of view, um, every full moon that we're having, not just these uh, super moons, but obviously the super moons is closer, therefore this, the strength of the ostrich um, is more palpable to you and for you. And the whole point is that not only is, is, are your emotions um, highlighted, but also your vision and your understanding of, yeah, that's the way to go. And it is important to know that because as a sign, Capricorn tends to be, mm, insecure is probably not the right word, but at times easily lost because of the different energies that the sign carries, if that makes sense. Um, and um, so therefore, just understand that there's more strength to be had when there is a super moon than there is weaknesses. And Capricorn is not a weak sign. It's just when it comes to your emotional core, as a Capricorn, um, not quite, not being not sure how to deal with things is because of not having the strength of one depiction, uh, but having to divide strengths by three, if that makes sense. So the advice therefore is don't rush anything and understand that in July, which is super important in July, the super moon means it's closer to the earth, you have more strengths, and the, the sun, which is sort of the ego part, the opposite of your emotions, just three days later, is the furthest from earth. Therefore, your super analytical side, your, your procrastinating side, your overthinking side, doesn't stand a chance. This is a really good month, therefore, and a really good full moon, therefore, to look at how am I truly feeling and do I want to feel that way and what should be done about it? So it's all really positive, but understand that the energy of a super moon is stronger than the energy of a regular full moon. And um, that is the first of four. So just be aware and be prepared that when you feel like, whoa, this time it hit me like a bloody bulldozer. Yeah, that's a super moon for you. And like I said, advice is, um, should you struggle with, with when you, if you feel, should you feel, I have to make decisions here, this isn't going anywhere and I need change or things need to change. Don't make these decisions on the super moon. You are much better off looking at, sitting with it and um, dealing with things around the sixth when the sun, when the ego is far removed. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for this month. Um, thank you so much and remember, um, the um, individual readings are also there. Just uh, please like, subscribe and share. And then you can check out the channel. There's tons of stuff there for you. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next month. Bye-bye.